Hey, what's up, guys? This is KD Cloudy, and right now it's about 12:30 a.m. in the morning, um, and my laptop is downloading macOS Big Sur. It's gonna take a while, so I thought I would just shoot a video about Apple Silicon. So we just had an Apple event. Apple just showed the world the new M1 chip for their Macs. It's a custom silicon, and they announced their departure, their exit from Intel chips a couple of months ago. And this video is not a technical explanation or any, you know, speculation about performance. This thing is about one thing, and one thing only, which is app compatibility and why that topic deserves some amount of conversation. And Apple is not a dumb company, of course. They have taken some plans, some steps to make sure this transition is as smooth as possible, and there is a minimum amount of friction when it comes to users wanting to install their favorite apps. And that's through one thing, one main thing called Rosetta. Rosetta is this new translation layer. So if you try to install any Intel based app on an Apple Silicon machine, Rosetta is going to kick in and it's going to real time translate all that code for, you know, Apple Silicon ARM 64 hardware. All Apple apps like their stock apps like uh, iWork, iPhoto, all of that stuff, iMessage, FaceTime, Final Cut Pro, iMovie, all that stuff is ported, compiled and working up and running in Apple Silicon ARM64. But the biggest challenge goes to third party developers who need to not sort of rebuild, but they need to have put some effort, recompile it into Apple Silicon and publish it again. It's sort of not that challenging for, you know, native apps, but the majority of Mac apps, the majority of desktop apps is based on Electron. Electron is like this framework which lets you convert your web application code, JavaScript, HTML, CSS and package it into a desktop application. That's Electron. And Electron apps have this bad reputation. They're infamous for running slow and having performance issues and being so memory intensive. But that doesn't matter because pretty much everybody makes apps using Electron, even Microsoft. And in fact, a lot of apps are Electron based. Spotify, Discord, Microsoft Teams, Skype, GitHub Desktop, VS Code. If you're a developer, that's huge. Electron also employs a similar kind of translation tech called just-in-time compilation, which Rosetta uses. So in theory, if you take an, an Electron app, which is meant for Intel hardware, and if you try to run it on Apple Silicon hardware, you're essentially going through two layers of just-in-time compilation, one for Rosetta and one for, you know, all that Electron stuff, which means that app performance is gonna be extremely, not extremely slow, M1 chips are pretty fast, but the performances won't be as what you would expect. So your daily performance, if you use a lot of, you know, Skype, Spotify, Discord, all that, that stuff is gonna hurt and that's gonna take a lot of memory. And you know, that part of the experience is not gonna be that great, but just for the initial time. And Electron is based off of like Chrome, Chromium and Node.js. So there are like two extra layers of third party dependencies. Electron has to be dependent upon Chromium and Node.js to have their ARM64 based builds. Thankfully, Chromium already has an ARM64 build thanks to Android smartphones. Node.js already has a working ARM64 version version of itself. Uh, so yeah, but Electron itself is in beta right now and it's up to other app developers to, you know, recompile their code and have an up and running version for Apple Silicon. And for that, they need an Apple Silicon hardware. So yeah, this app compatibility stuff is probably not quite as sorted out as Apple might want you to think it is. I could be wrong. I would love to be wrong in this case. And this entire thing could just go away in a blip in this entire coming week by the time the new Macs ship. And also to Apple's credit, they have done a few, a bunch of open source contributions to like major, you know, software uh, open source projects like Python 3 uh, and Go and FFmpeg, which is used by literally all video editing and manipulation softwares and a bunch more other stuff, even Homebrew. Homebrew is this ultimate Mac package manager, even Mac ports. And you know what I'm talking about if you're a Mac user. 
But the thing is that I visited Homebrew's GitHub page and saw an issue still being open with regards to Apple Silicon compatibility. Not really sure what's going on. In fact, Google Chrome itself doesn't really have a public downloadable version which works right now in Apple Silicon. So yeah, all of these things and I'm not really sure how other, you know, development tools like Docker, uh, Jupyter Notebook, all of these guys are still figuring out how to port their software into this ARM64 architecture. And it's gonna be quite a challenge, but it's definitely not technically possible. It's gonna be a challenge, but we're definitely gonna get there. And like I said, it's just this short uh, term hurdle, but in the long term, all Mac users will benefit from it. And in fact, this entire PC industry will benefit from it. I might sound, I might have sounded a bit negative towards this entire thing. I'm sorry if I was. I'm really excited about Apple Silicon, but I just wanted to get this out there. And yeah, like I said, I totally could be wrong. And you probably watched this entire video for nothing. But nevertheless, thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Thank you.